Hello, we will start in a minute. Okay, I think we can start. Probably other people will connect, but uh, <clears throat> it's not very important. It's just my talk and uh, the introduction. So the, the tutorial actually starts uh, after this talk. So the meeting is recorded. We are recording the meeting for future use. So my name is Francesco Gonnella. There is uh, Davide Ceri with me and Nico Giangiacomi. They can show themselves if they want. Um, we are the developers um, together with a uh, bunch of people of this system called HOG. And today we are going to explain to you what, uh, what it does and give you um, a tutorial. So um, you can. Uh, so this is an introductory uh, talk, but after this the tutorial we start, you can do uh, the same on, on your computer, uh, given that you have, uh, if you have a uh, Vivado 2020.2. And I don't think it's anything else to say. So I will start with my talk. If you have questions, um, I think you can't unmute yourself. So you just uh, raise your hand and some of us will, uh, will unmute you to, to ask the question. Okay, so um, Hog uh, is bor was born to, to solve um, a certain amount of problems that always arises when you are trying to um, do firmware, in, in my case, in uh, high energy physics. And there are a certain number of problems that uh, uh, you want to, to address. So, for example, uh, the most typical is that uh, developers have uh, their firmware on their computer and then they just give you the bit file and you, uh, when you have to ask um, for modifications, it's always, uh, everything is quite obscure. Or another problem is that you have something loaded on the FPGA and you did a test and uh, the day after that you go ah but what did we test what was it uh, are you sure you loaded that firmware these kind of, uh, of problems that i have <laughs> uh, faced many times and another one that is very typical this happens quite a while to me because i am the firmware guy in the university people come and say yeah just let's just download this firmware and build it firmware that i don't know anything about for some board that you don't know anything about and they say, just change the IP address that is in the top file, and then it will work. And this, that should require five minutes, most of the time, so it requires <laughs> days. And actually, in, in firmware, we are quite lucky because we don't need external libraries. We don't need a lot of things. What do we need, in our case, today, the, um, the, the tutorial is based on Vivado, so let's just concentrate on, on Vivado. What we need is just having Vivado installed and everything should work. But uh, typically when you have something on Git, then you have a lot of dependencies or a lot of things that you need to download to uh, prepare the, the framework, let's say. So given all of this problem in mind, we designed a system to, to, to address them. So why and uh, how do we use Git? To, to solve this, uh, this kind of uh, problems and to handle a HDL on a, on a repository. Uh, what we want is to guarantee that um, the synthesis and the place and route are reproducible. So starting from the same point, we obtain exactly the same result. And to do this, we need an absolute control of the source files, constraint, and the settings of our ID, in, the, in our case, Vivad. And in this case, we can achieve, if we do that, we can achieve the, the fact that the, pro, the produced bid file are exactly the same. And they are exactly the same, I'll show you in the next slide, since Vivado 2020.2. Then another thing that we want to achieve is to assure traceability of the binary file. So given a binary file, we want to know exactly how that was produced, and obviously being able to reproduce it again exactly the same. To do this, 
The solution is to embed the Git SHA into the firmware register or a version number inside the, the firmware. And uh, we want to do all of this without adding overload on the developers. Developers should work exactly as they are used to because people need to do their work, they don't need to worry about something else. And also because if it, the system is too annoying, then, people, then developers tend not to use it. So we want that Vivad or Quartus or whatever is used normally, Git is used normally, not through external scripts, so that you can learn, you can use what you learned in your Git courses. And we do not want to add any overhead work, no downloads, no installation, no additional requirement. So you just have your Git, you have your Vivado, and it should work. You have your simulator, it should also simulate. So this is our goal. This is what we want to achieve. And this is just my little slide about how are the binary files the same is because I've been chasing this problem for a couple of years now, and now they finally solved. Yes, if you uh, produce starting with the same point, in this case we did it with HOG, we certified that it was exactly the same point. The bin files, even in two different machines, are exactly the same. So you run if you get nothing. And uh, uh, the bit file instead, they have just one uh, timestamp. They differ just for a couple of bytes where there is a timestamp. But the rest of the file is all exactly the same. So how does HOG address the problems that we have uh, discussed up to now? So um, what it is, it's just a, a set of TQL scripts. The whole thing is less than one megabyte, plus a methodology that you need to, to follow. All the functions are super compatible, so we test that they work everywhere. And how you use it, you include it as a sub-module in, in your repository so that you can update it when you want. If we release the new one, nothing will bro be broken for you because you can update it when you feel it's the time. And you can even have different hot versions for different uh, projects in, in, your, uh, in your computer. There's not an installation of hot. Um, how is it done? We, in, uh, in your repository, you have one special folder called top that contains some text file called list files that contain the, all the files included in your project and a configuration file called hog.conf that contains all the properties. For the rest, you can store your source files as you want anywhere in the repositories, even in submodules, however you want. What do you need to do? You run the create project script, and that will create your uh, Vivado project. And then you, you use it. You, um, you can edit and, uh, and work with your Vivado project. The script are integrated in the flow of Vivado flow without you knowing it. So when you create the project, HOG integrates this pre-synthesis, post-implementation, and post-bitstream scripts that do all the magic to uh, guarantee traceability and reproducibility. What Git flow should you use? You should use a short-lived feature branches. So you do a start from master, do your modification, and then you uh, merge back to master. And the important thing is that you don't want any new commit on merge because we want to preserve the Git shop because it's the thing that we embed in the binary file. For the developers, there is no additional thing to do. You clone the repository, git clone, with recursive for the submodules, launch hog script, start developing. This is the what we want to, to achieve, and this is what is achieved with, with hog. Then you use Vivado or Quartus. Let me just say Vivado for, for today, but remember that it's also Quartus. Then you use Vivado GUI uh, basically normally uh, in project mode. And you, we also provide shell scripts that you can use to run the, uh, the synthesis and uh, produce the bit file uh, in batch mode, but you don't need to use them. You can use them if you want. And uh, normally you can um, start the synthesis of the implementation clicking on Vivado buttons. And this will trigger all the integrated script uh, automatically and you will, uh, without you, uh, you, that you have to do anything about it. And uh, as I told you, the scripts are embedded when you create the project. For the rest, you do everything normally, with the exception, uh, unfortunately, but also obviously, that if you add new files, you rename files, or you change the properties in your project, obviously, somehow, you have to commit these changes to the repository. To do that, you can either um, manually change the list files or change the hog.conf uh, file, including the new properties, or you can, you can use this uh, fancy 
uh, buttons that we created in the newest um, um, hog releases with this uh, uh, pig nose here. One is to check if everything is compliant with what is committed, and the other two are to update the list files and the comp file. So if you want, you can even change, do, use the GUI normally, you change a file, you add another file, you click this button, that will automatically change the list files, then of course you have to commit them and, um, and send them to the repository and push them to the repository. Uh, another thing that HOG does is that um, in a set of generic and parameters of so version, SHA, date, and then I will tell you what are um, uh, fed to the top module of your project so that you can use them in the firmware. You have this, uh, this number to, to store in some, uh, in some registers. And the intellectual properties need to be done out of context, and then you just commit the XCI file in the case of, uh, of Vivado, IPINT, or the other uh, Quartus format in the case of, of uh, Quartus. So the folder structure of your repository is uh, um, very simple. So you have the files however you want in, in the repository. So we don't, uh, we don't uh, have any restriction on that. You have an optional folder with Oxygen, which I will not talk about now. Your hog submodule has to be in the root folder and has to be called hog like this with a capital H. And then a special folder top that has to be called like this. And each subfolder of this top is a project. Actually, you can also use groups, so put an additional subfolder here if you want. But the last uh, um, point of the branch here, like project one, two, and three, or as many as you want, they, there is one folder for each project in your repository because you can have multiple projects in one repository. And for each of these folder, you have a list folder that contains the list files and the hog.com file that contains the properties that you um, set on Vivado. This can be strategies or max fan out, uh, those, those kind of properties. These list files contain inside all the uh, source files that you want to add to your project. There are source list files, uh, simulation list file for, sim uh, for uh, the simulation uh, sets, and constraint list file. You can have multiple source files, and each of these will correspond to a different DHDL library. So you can keep uh, things separated if you want. For example, you have different developers working at different things. And uh, HOG is also IPBAS compatible. So if you have uh, your uh, XM IPBAS XML, you can uh, list them in the IPBAS list, list file. And this is an example of, uh, this is the EFX project for, for Atlas, but it's always the same. Uh, you have uh, many list files. You see the, all the source file, the .src, will correspond to a library inside Vivado. And the simulation source, uh, source file will correspond in a simulation set. To a, will correspond to a simulation set here. And then here you can see all the, the T code that uh, Hog adds automatically without you having to do anything about that. This is when you start the synthesis. If you go in the in the logs, you will see this, and these are all the versions and the SHA that Hog feeds to your firmware. This before libraries here, these are always fed. So you have a global SHA and version, a version for the constraints, one for the FP bus, if you use them, one for hog and one for the top folder that is this folder that I was talking about here. So the hog conf and the source files, if you touch this, that will influence this, uh, this number here. And then one for each library, you have SHA and version. And if you have, um, external uh, libraries I'm not going to talk about, also those you, you can have here. And these are all fed to your firmware so that if you use, for example, IPBAS, you can connect them to registers and you can look at them. But if you use other, other technologies to access uh, registers, you can connect them as you want because you have them as, a, as generics. Uh, the date and the time are not the, time of, the date of the time where the synthesis will, was launched but they are the date of the time of the last commit because we want to guarantee reproducibility. So if you change something, the firmware will be different. But instead, we want it to be exactly the same. We are really in a paranoid way. We want it really exactly the same. 
So a feature that I'm going to talk about now is the project flavor. It's a, um, a, a nice idea that we had on uh, Hog to, um, to avoid the code duplication uh, and to allow you to reduce it to the minimum, plus possibly zero, because in VHDL it's uh, uh, often difficult not to copy and paste. So this uh, feature allows you to have different projects, for, for example, different uh, PGAs on the same board, uh, to have these different projects sharing exactly the same files. All the files are the same, even the top file. And the differentiation be between the various projects is done on the basis of an integer number that is called flavor. And then that's how you do it. You just do your name dot uh, the number. And the number is fed to the FPGAs. And then you can do um, if generate on the on the basis of this uh, of this number. And this uh, was used extensively, for example, in EFX, and we uh, achieved good results with basically zero uh, duplication. Uh, the only uh, big recommendation that we have here is that you should always commit before building. You should always do that, even if it's just a test, even if it's just um, a try that you're doing in that moment. You should always commit because when you commit, even if you don't push just locally, Git will create a SHA, will certify what you have, and then feed the value to the register. So you will always be able to reproduce it. And um, then if you made a mistake, never mind, you recommit and do it again. There is no problem. You don't need to push. But what if you are nasty or what if you are uh, distracted and you don't? Well, if you have uncommitted modifications, Hog will find out and give you a critical warning and then set zero instead of the version in the binary file so that people will know that that binary file was produced with a dirty repository. But we'd also produce diff files so that in case you can go back to what was the modification. But it's we want to avoid that people do that, that dirty bit files go around. But what if I add a file from the GUI and Hog doesn't know? Also in that case, the presynthesis will compare the project with the list files and find out. But if you change a property, for example, you change uh, um, the max fan out, then the presynthesis again will find out and put zero there. What if you remove the presynthesis script from Vivado? Well, if you do that, then you, you fool the hog, but you, you're very mean if you do that. But in that case, you will not have all the SHAs and all the, the, the versions. So still, we will uh, be able to find out that so other people will be able to, to realize that that firmware is not reproducible. So the message is uh, commit before building, because that's the way that we can uh, find out how that firmware was, uh, was produced. Then Hog also uh, gives you uh, the means to um, set up uh, easily and basically with zero effort a continuous integration, given that you have a machine that is already set up. In the, instead, in that case, you need a little bit of effort that will be covered in this uh, tutorial. Uh, OK, here I will be just quick. Um, the, um, the continuous integration will run the, those hog scripts that automatically launch the workflow, basically for all your project. And uh, in the end, it will um, collect all the, the bit files that will be uh, saved as artifact uh, uh, of your um, of your continuous integration. How simple is it to set it up? Very simple. So this is a, a, the normal CI. So you add one of these things for each project that you want. So this is to generate it, this is to simulate it. And of course, you need to include the whole um, YAML file, because actually the, the, real, the real stuff is not here, it's in these files that you don't need to look at. So you include this, then this is enough to start uh, the, um, the CI. And then there is this other feature that is, is working, but uh, it's a little bit more experimental, let's say, but it's quite stable uh, lately. So instead of uh, including the hog YAML, you include the hog dynamic, and then you don't even need to do the projects. Hog will find them on its own in the repository and just run all of them. Obviously, there are other ways to exclude some projects in this case. To set up uh, the, the virtual machine, we have another repository that, that is here, and this will be covered by Davide. In the second part of the, so in the third part of this uh, of this tutorial today, and to customize your your GitLab CI, what you do, you just uh, uh, 
set some variables on the website there it's all documented in host documentation and you can enable the oxygen you can uh, change in the path change the version of Vivado you are using or uh, uh, other fancy things that you can find in the documentation you can ask me about for example this hog pro uh, check uh, check project there will enable the fact that hog only launches the ci for projects that were changed with respect to the last um, official version. If you disable this, it will launch them uh, no matter what. And then there are some custom jobs that can be run before or after the hog, hog jobs that you can uh, put there to do um, other custom uh, functionalities that you want to implement yourself. But in those cases, obviously, you need to write some YAML. This is uh, um, an example of uh, uh, the automatic GitLab releases uh, that the hog does for you, parsing your um, commit messages and does the change log automatically. Uh, repository info tells you which one was the branch, which one was the branch name. And then there are tables with the timing automatically put there and with all the versions that I told you about before. And then obviously the uh, bit files are included as a zip. Uh, a zip file. So this is the end of my talk. Hog is available on GitLab, send so GitLab here. We are five uh, working on it. We release it typically twice a year, January and June. So the release that we are use, using now is quite fresh. So <laughs> there can be still bugs uh, lurking there. Hopefully everything go, will go smoothly today. If you want experimental features, they are always available on the develop branch. Now, there is nothing because uh, we recently merged it to master. So Hog 2021.2 is the present release. The documentation is here, or you can write us an email. We are always happy to receive email, and we are always keen to know who is using Hog, because we don't know, actually, unless people tell us. And we need it to uh, to put it in our uh, in our slide to see to show people that Hog is used, and Hog works also on Windows because it's just Tico scripts, and with Git Bash. And if you want to try it, for example, try this um, this uh, project that I made for for June in Birmingham. Uh, you just do this, and it should work. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. And now I will share myself, so I will see. I think there is already a question from Pashalis. Can you do that, uh, David, please? Yes, I will unmute it. Pashalis Okay. Pas Pascal is your hoodie. Yes. Pascal. All right. So, Francesco, thanks very much for all that. Thanks for answering vaguely what happens on Windows, because we have to understand that there are people working with Windows. Mm -hmm. And also, some people, I guess, know that sometimes Windows give far better timing results. So quite often we have total disaster in Linux and fantastic results with Windows. So Windows is a must, if you ask me, it must be there. So I would never consider any option that works only for Linux. That's my personal opinion. But, and, uh, but thanks for uh, even in the last slide vaguely saying that probably works on Windows. I would say that it should definitely work on Windows, otherwise, that's not a good product, sorry. Uh, and the second question is XCI. I'm really surprised that you mentioned XCIs. I assume you know that when you check out in your folder, your XCI, the XCI, one of the things it does, it's, it writes down the path. So if I work on my path under my name, Pascalis work, and you check out under Francesco, the XCI is different. Uh, mm. Yes, it's it's different. It will be different. So then when I commit, mm. I'll have to commit an XCI which is identical. However, there, there are some lines different, even though nothing essential is there. I, I, I'm sorry, but uh, that is not true. Uh, that is not true. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. The XCI uh, doesn't, I don't know, I don't think it contains any path because we do this and the files are exactly the same. It contains some dates and some versions, unfortunately, and some timestamps sometimes, but uh, there, is, uh, there is not an absolute path in the, in the XCI. Maybe David and... Um, 
That is very surprising. I can show you an XCI if you want. I mean, now we need to go on, but uh, if that, absolutely yes. Uh, so so this is this is something we have seen since ages now, and it was one of the typical problems we were facing because we did something similar to what you're proposing, and it's not as beautifully wrapped, of course. So anyway, that's one thing, and the other thing is very similar, which is the block diagrams. So the block diagrams also they do have some funny features. So my question is, how do you address XCI and block diagram BD file that they do have things changing based on path and similar things like that. The BD is even worse. It yes. acts actually actually reorders things without any particular reason. Yes, no, so, but, no, yes. Pascalis, but I, I'm sorry, then we can take it offline maybe, but there are, there are many people and- uh, Absolutely, anyway, so I'm just uh, raising anyway. the questions and I'm surprised that they are not addressed. The little yeah. project we will show, there is a, both an XCI and a BD5 included. So you will see how the, this is handled. Anyway, I just have a look at the XCI file and there is no path saved into that. So but anyway, we will, uh, we will see later. I think there is a question also from Marcus. Marcus, sorry. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, following the comment from Pascalis about the different timing results over Windows and Linux, and the, you mentioned at the beginning about the, the idea of having reproducibility. So I wanted to check with you guys how much have you tried to reproduce a given project using a different operation system? I mean, either Windows or Linux, or even different version of Linux as well. So or if you always use the, you always try to reproduce with the same installation or you tried out the different options as well. So uh, the, the diff that I showed in slide two, that is done with uh, li both Linux and uh, two different, one is Fedora and the other one is CentOS 7. I think as long as uh, um, Vivado is exactly the same, it's gonna give exactly the same results. Comparing Windows and Linux, I haven't done, but I don't think it will be the same because Xilinx themselves, they say it's going to be different. And honestly, as I don't use uh, Windows myself, even if I can guarantee that Hog perfectly works on Windows because my colleagues, uh, they use it on Windows every day, I have never tested if it is re reproducible uh, between Windows and Windows either. I haven't tested personally, but I would bet it, it is it was just a vivado problem uh, up to 2020.2 i chased it uh, with xilinx and in the end they debugged it in 2020.2 and now it's perfectly reproducible the the problem that i see with windows is that in any case the ci uh, as it is done now it's done with linux so you do it with windows then the ci would be different but uh, we are we are also uh, thinking of um, i think we have some uh, some other developers now they are trying to, they have managed to set up a CI on a Windows machine. Okay, okay, thank you. Let's do one more question, David, and then uh, I go quickly through the projects, otherwise we sure. go. Uh, David? I lost it. Okay. Okay. So did you find him? Uh, not anymore. Can you raise your hand again, please? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay. Try to mute now. Is it? Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I couldn't unmute myself. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, we are using in a in a certain in a BI. We are using something similar, which is based on the TCL scripts, but we only have a like a very a uh, very short one and very lightweight, which are doing uh, basically uh, generation of a timestamp on fly and generation of the uh, of, of the hardware revision number or say revision number based on a date plus compilation, uh, which increases by one every time you do a compilation a day. Yeah, and uh, uh, the point is that uh, we store, or at least I do, uh, some of my colleagues do as well. We store the binaries together with uh, with the uh, source code to the git and one of the reasons for that is uh, that we really see 
on some cases, especially when I'm using uh, IP cores, for example, DDR or JDEG IP cores, we see uh, differences between Windows and the Linux uh, compilations. Uh, I didn't uh, notice, did you, uh, do you store with the home the binaries as well, or you have to uh, fetch them and recompile yourself? Because if you do this, uh, we have uh, we have an experience basically that we don't get the same results depending on where you compile under Windows or, or under Linux. I'm not talking about Exynos. I'm talking about Altera or uh, sorry Intel now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, so that was a question. Yeah. Yeah. So I will uh, answer this question and, and at the same time I will go on with the little uh, demonstration that I do. So we do save the bit file. Uh, but the reason is not that we are afraid that we can't reproduce it because we can. The reason is that um, we, it, take, it might take six hours, eight hours to reproduce them. So obviously, once you have done it, you don't want to, to redo it. So for example, uh, if I, this is our website for effects. And this is, a, I mean, the website is done by me, but the, the copying of the files is done automatically by by hog so if you go here this is on eos for example this is the last version so every time that the ci completes automatically copies everything here so we have this many fpgas on the project and for each of those you have bin bit file if you have a, a um, what is it called uh, ila in it you have the ltx file then there are the timings where you can see what was the timing then there are the versions, so you can see what the versions were all archived here. But I guarantee you that if you go to this um, commit SHA and redo exactly the synthesis, you will obtain exactly the same result on Linux. If you do that on Windows, it, it will be it will, that it would be different. So now I will go on from here. So um, so this is the effects uh, uh, that is a project that is uh, um, done with HOG and maintained with HOG. And you see that we have four uh, projects that have the same name and a different number. And this is the flavor. This means that these four projects share exactly completely the, um, the same files, even the top file. So if I go to the repository of this, of this firmware, this is, this is a, a firmware handled with hog. So what you see in a firmware handled with hog is the hog submodule here and the top folder. All the rest you can do it as you want. This is as, as we, we have decided to do it. And if I go for example here, the releases, this is, um, let me click this one, it's going to be the same, just I can go down. This is the last release. And this is done automatically by Hog. It will do the info of the repository, the change log that is done automatically parsing the, the commit. These are the tables with the versions for all the projects. This is the timing for all the projects. And here we have the archive again. This is a, an independent archive on the, from the one of EOS. So if you don't want to use EOS, you can use just this one. And this is not stored on Git because you shouldn't commit binary file on the repository. It, it is, is stored on Git website, but it's not on the repository. It's in a, actually, I don't know exactly where it is, but it's on the disk of the machine that runs Git, and you can download it from here. And if we open um, that project, effects with Vivado, this is a, um, open with Vivado, you can see, for example, if we open the, the um, our top module, okay, you will see that we have all these generics here that are fed. See, the default is zero, but they are fed automatically by, uh, by hog. And the uh, most important one is this flavor here. And then we use it as a, a, a index to in, in instantiate different parts. See, if uh, flavor is uh, this number or that number, then you can do if generate, or you can pass it to other to other uh, modules that, according to the flavor, do different things. So basically, FPGA 1, 2, 3, and 4 that we have there, they all share this top file, and this helps reducing the, the code duplication quite a lot. Then I, uh, let me just show you very quickly, uh, what did I do? Very quickly, how you 
get a, a repository from uh, for if it's done with hog. So let's do with the test firmware. This is a, this is a dummy firmware that we use to test hog. So I go here, I pick my protocol, I, I copy it, I just go here. This is a, a machine. Yeah, of course I might be cheating and there is a lot of stuff installed here, but there is no, there is just Vivado. You can see that there is a Vivado installed. So I go git clone minus minus recursive. This is for the sub module. I paste the repository. It downloads it. Now I can go in it. And you will see that there is the hog sub module. And guess what? The top folder. Okay, so here I see that there are my my project. Okay, so here I do hog create project. It tells me, look, there are this possible project. I create this one. So I go hog create project example. I could have typed it. And this launches Vivado and creates the project. Then, so see, you can go through and read the messages, what it, what it is doing. But what it's doing is uh, reading the list files and adding all the files to the project, then reading the hog.conf file and adding it and modifying the, the, the uh, properties. Then we do Vivado. The projects are always created in the projects folder. Example, example.xpr, I open it. And then this this guy has a little bug in this project. Yeah, <laughs> we have a problem in the simulation, but that's a problem of the project, not not of Hog, of course. <laughs> it has plenty of bugs, I think, but not this one. And here, this is the top of our project. With um, but there is just a couple of things, a couple of IPs inside. And then if I want to run it, I run it like this, and it will launch, it will have to, to do the, the XCI first, the, the IPs, and, uh, and it, it will be launched, and it will be ready soon. When you um, launch a project, now I will go on effects where I've done it already, you will see that the bin directory is created, and inside the bin directory, you will have um, all the binary files that are produced. So if you go and synthesize, make a change, synthesize and make a change, normally Vivado would delete everything. Instead, in this case, everything is uh, kept. So see, sometimes if I don't commit, it's dirty and I should not do that. Then for example, let's open this one. And let's see what's inside. And here I see if I find my binary file, my bit file, the IP bus XML, there were timing error. Let's see by how much. Yeah, there was a very small timing violations and the and the versions. And you see the file is automatically renamed. So when you ship this file, you put it on a pen drive or you send it to someone, it's very unlikely that you get confused because the file is renamed. And also this number is also embedded in the file. So if you if you look inside the file with a text editor, you will see this, this number. And I think that's all for me. Okay, we are eight minutes behind, but I think it's fine. Should we do another round of questions? I guess we can go straight to Nico's tutorial then. Okay, so I will stop sharing. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Please, Francesco, say yes, if you can hear. Yes. Good, I assume it's a yes. Um, let me share my screen. So thank you for the, um, 
Thank you for the um, presentation, Francesco. I hope you are able to see my screen here. Okay, so um, now I want to show you how to create uh, um, hook project starting from an existing Vivado project. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. Um, first of all, uh, uh, if you have uh, a Vivado project that is not uh, yet uh, stored on um, Git, uh, so you have just the local uh, copy of your project. And then a more realistic example, I will start from a project, um, an old project I was working with uh, years ago, and I will uh, convert it into Hog. And I will show you how easy that is, hopefully. So I really suggest you open the, the tutorial if you want to follow it yourself. And if you have Vivado 2020.2, actually for the first part, even a, a different version should work fine. You can actually follow me in real time. So you go on, you click on create a hog project starting from a local project and you shall have the list of instructions. I, I wrote, so I suggest you have, it, have them open while I work. So um, we want to convert an existing Vivado project into Hog. Uh, I don't have a project existing now, so we are going to use uh, a Vivado um, example project, in particular the Ibert core. Um, and uh, so let's start by creating the project. So we'll move on um, here I'm using uh, uh, I'm on Linux, so I'm using um, Bash, but you can use a Git shell if you're working on Linux and everything should work uh, exactly the same, hopefully. So first of all, we create a, a new directory. Let's call it, for example, example project. And we go into it and then we open Vivado. Again, I'm using Vivado 2020.2, but you can go for whatever other version you have for the first part. For the second part, it's better if you have Vivado 2020.2 since there are IPs already there. So we go on, create projects. Uh, you can leave everything as default. Uh, and uh, so go on next, next, next. Uh, uh, the only thing that we want to change for the moment uh, is the default part and we are going to select boards and the KC705 uh, if we find it, I think it's this one. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Does it? Okay, so we've had created our empty project for a KC705 uh, um, evaluation board. Um, so we said that we want to use the um, example project from Vivado for the Ibert uh, core and to do it, we go on IP catalog. Uh, we look for the Ibert IP and we double click on this uh, Hyper 7 series GTX. So if you're not familiar with Ibert, uh, well, this is just a core provided by Vivado that helps you test uh, your transceivers. And uh, we can leave everything as default. Uh, we don't really care about uh, what, what uh, the project is going to do. Uh, the only thing I want to change is the IP location. So you click here on IP location and we are going to set it to um, IP. And this is because when we add the core on uh, Git, uh, it will have uh, just a cleaner path. So that's the only reason for doing it. Uh, you can leave the default location, but it's uh, um, not recommended, at least by us. Let's complain directory is not uh, existing. We created it. We click on OK. And we can actually skip the generated generate output products since uh, we don't really care. So we have now our IP here. You see the, there is an XCI. Uh, if you go on the IP sources tab, you right click on the core and you click on open IP example design. Um, so now Vivado is opening an example design based on the Iber core and um, for the board uh, KC705. So you see it's opening another project. Uh, we, can, we don't want to need anymore the first project, so we can click on it and close it. 
Uh, okay, so this is the new project created by Vivado. And you see it's just uh, a wrapper, um, a Verilog uh, a wrapper around the, our core. There are a couple of text files that are needed for the, for the wrapper. And there is a constraint file. So uh, nothing more than uh, one Verilog file, uh, one XCI, two text files, uh, and one constraint file, five files in total. Um, okay, so we created our project. Um, now we want to um, put it on Git. So we want to create a Git repository and we want to add the, all the source file there. To do it, uh, we open uh, gitlab.cern.ch, for example, since we're using here. Uh, you go on projects, uh, create a blank project. And we can call our project, well, again, example project. Let's see, I already did it. You go and create project, and uh, here it is. So we have our empty, pro completely empty project we just created. And we now want to link the directory we created locally on with this uh, URL, so with uh, this remote. Uh, we copy the URL of the project and we go back to our terminal and we just type git init and uh, we now we need to connect it to the to the remote so git remote add and we paste the remote that we just uh, copied add in dot git ah, of course i forgot git so the command is actually git remote add origin and then you paste the you paste the url um, okay, now we want to add on Git all the source file that are needed to build the project and only the source file, not the project file itself, because in general is a, a bad procedure to add the project file on Git and uh, you won't need it once we convert the project uh, into Pog. So let's start by adding, uh, manually adding all the files we created. Um, so we had, uh, first of all, the IP that was in IP, Iber series, whatever, and uh, uh, we only need to add the XCI. And then you need, you had all the, uh, all the other files that were automatically put in the Iber 7 series uh, folder. Then there is a import directory. And if you look what's inside this directory, there are so this is the very log wrapper. This is the um, constraint file, and those are the two txt files. So we can actually add everything inside the that folder, and we commit. Uh, let's call the the message first commit. Okay. So now we created the Vivado project, and uh, we created a Git repository. We put all the source file there. Uh, next step, uh, we want to convert the Vivado project into a hog project. Um, so uh, as Francesco was saying, hog won't, require, won't need anything to be installed on your machine. Uh, you just need to um, add the uh, hog some module into your repository. So let's do it uh, with the command git some module add. And then here you can put either the relative path of hog repository uh, respect to your project or the global path. That is what we are going to do now. So it's https slash gitlab.cern.ch slash hog slash hog and if we look what's inside our repository, we see that there is a new directory here called hog. And if we look what's inside the hog directory, you see there's a bunch of stuff that it's uh, actually the hog some, what's inside the hog some module, what we are going to need for our project. So we have hog some module in our repository, and now um, we need to create uh, 
a set of files, uh, as Francesco was uh, saying, and as is written in uh, our HOG documentation, that um, so this set of files uh, will contain everything that is needed to create the project. So there's going to be a file containing all the project properties, and there is going to be uh, the other set of files that contains all the files that are contained in the, um, in, uh, in the project. So Og wants those files to be called in a directory that we're going to create that is called top with capital T and project name. So in our case, we can call our project again, example project. Um, yeah. Ah, yes. Let's add the option minus P so that we can actually create the directory. Um, so, um, and now we are going to create uh, uh, the, a file that is called top example project and hog.conf. And this file will contain all the project properties that are needed for uh, by our project. So if you look into the documentation, you'll see that uh, for Vivado, uh, you can have uh, uh, at least three sections inside this of uh, properties. One is for the global properties. Um, so are the project properties in general. And then there is a section dedicated to the properties uh, of simulation and one of the properties of implementation. So in our project, we didn't change anything. Everything is uh, as default. The only thing we changed is the, is the project part. So we specified the FPGA to be a um, Kintec 7. And this is a global property. So a project property, and it goes in a section called main. So we create a main section and we had the, we need to specify what part we are using and uh, here we need to put the value of uh, kc705 uh, um, fpga i'm going to copy it from a different screen because i, don't, I can't remember it myself um something we miss uh, um, we have to add uh, in the first line a string called uh, hashtag vivado and this is telling hod hog that uh, uh, we're working on a Vivado project. So if instead you were working on a Quartos project, you need to write uh, hashtag Quartos and in the main section, uh, instead of part, you have FPGA equals whatever FPGA model you are using. And then of course you also need FPGA family to be your uh, FPGA family. Now we save and we exit. Uh, so we set all the properties that are needed to, to recreate the project we, we created previously with Hog. Um, now we need to specify what are the files contained in our Hog project. So we need to create another directory called top example project list. And here yeah, we can do with, uh, we can use Jedi this time. It's a bit easier. Um, we create a file uh, containing all the source file that we need. So we are gonna need at least um, two files. One for the sources, which are VHDL, Verilog, IPs, block designs, or um, other files like, for example, the text files that we have in our project, and one for the uh, constraints. So in our case, we're going to have uh, work.src, and this means that this is going to be the file containing the source files, uh, and uh, they are going to uh, stay in the HDL library named work. And uh, we want to add it all the files that are contained in the project. So I uh, actually don't remember their name. Let's just, uh, there was the IP that was uh, called like this. So I'm going to copy it and paste it here. Then there are the sources that were here, imports. So I'm going to 
copy. I'm gonna copy the. This is the. This is our. So this is our very log wrapper. It's in the directory, hyper seven series gtx zero x imports. Blah, blah. And here, um, so this is actually uh, the top file of our project. And we need to inform Hog that uh, this is the top file of our project. And we can do it by adding the property top equals and the name of the top module, which in our case is this one. Uh, then Uh, we need to add the text files. So I'm going to copy it. Oops. Try again. I'm going to copy it and paste it. And finally, um, there, there is the other, there is, of course, the other text files. So And that's it for what concerns the source files. We can close it. And now we need to create uh, um, the um, list file for the constraints. So we need to create a new file called, again, see, top example project list. And then we can uh, call it whatever name, for example, constraints.con. Dot .con, the dot .con suffix means that this is a file containing the constraints for our project. So we copy and, and we copy here the name of the constraints uh, of our file, which again is in hyper seven series uh, imports and example hyper.xdc. Copy, paste. And voila. So we created our uh, top directory. Uh, we filled with all the constraints, uh, all, all the uh, project properties, and all the, uh, the set of files that are needed for uh, Hog to work. Uh, we have now to commit everything. So we add um, everything we created on the top directory. Oops. So it had top. And uh, we uh, commit and last thing we have to do. Um, so Og wants uh, uh, a tag in a, a repository that is in the form of uh, minus dot minor dot uh, patch. So we need to create a new git tag. And we'll let's call it uh, v0.0.1. So zero, the first zero here is the major version. This is the minor version. And this is the patch version. And let's call it uh, our first hog tag. Okay. Uh, now we have everything we need to convert our project to a hog project. And uh, we can create the new hog project by using the hog command. Uh, which is in hog create project.sh. This command wants an argument, which is project name. But if you're, you forget that just run it as it is, it will tell you that you forgot to write the project name, to have the project name option. Uh, and also gives you a list of um, the possible projects that are in your uh, repository. In this case, there is only one project, which is example project. So. Let's run it again with example project. Uh, let's wait a bit and we'll see that Hog will uh, create a project that is uh, has all the nice features that Francesco was talking about um, and is also basically identical to the original project we started from. So if we open Vivado again,
let's wait a bit. Uh, we'll see that the new project uh, was put in a directory called projects, example project, so project name, and it's, it's here. And if we, so if we look at this project side to side with our original project, that was this one over here, uh, we see that they are exactly the same. So there is uh, one uh, um, wrapper in Verilog uh, um, around our IP core. There are a couple of uh, text files uh, and there is the constraint file. Everything else is uh, working exactly the same. So uh, we close the original project. So we only keep the hog project. And um, the point is that if we build our project now, uh, we will have all our uh, hog features. So um, um, the um, reproducibility is uh, granted and uh, everything that Francesco was talking about. Uh, to build a project, we can either do it from the console. So we click on run synthesis, uh, implementation and generative stream or we can do it from command line on the GUI uh, using the hog command hog uh, launch workflow. And again, the script wants, wants an argument that is the project name. So example project. Uh, this is going to take a while and we're probably going to kill it soon since we don't have uh, much time. Um, so, uh, a quick overview of what we did. Well, we, since we are waiting for Vivado to uh, create the, to build the APs. So what we did so far was, uh, um, to create, uh, uh, we created an empty project. We create, we started from an example design from Quartos for, from the Hypercore. Uh, we, uh, had, uh, we put it on Git. We uh, had did hog some module and we had did the, all the files that are needed by hog to create, uh, to, um, I mean, to build a hog project, to convert uh, this project uh, to hog. And finally, we created the project and built it. So if you look uh, um, during the project synthesis, we have a bunch of information from HOG that they are actually saying uh, that um, HOG is actually doing something in, uh, in the background, something that you don't know this, because this is done in the pre-synthesis script that is embed embedded in our Vivado workflow. And if you launch it, uh, if you launch the project generation on a shell, or if you launch it on Vivado, uh, the outcome is going to be completely identical. So you can use uh, whatever method uh, it's more convenient for you. It's fine. So if you give a quick look to the hog messages here, you see that hog is checking that uh, whatever it's in the project actually matches what's in the list files and uh, uh, in the hog.conf uh, file. And here it looks like everything matches, which is good. Uh, it, is, it says that the, the project is clean and also is uh, um, evaluating a series of um, um, generics here. So like the firmware date and time, the global SHA, uh, et cetera. And we can wait for a while. It's still uh, working. In the meantime, uh, I hope just open a new, new shell. Uh, if we do a less, we see that uh, there is a new directory that was called by Hog, which is bin. And the bin is the directory where all the project uh, um, build files are going to be stored. So if we look into it, uh, we see that there is a, a directory called project name dash um, git tag dash um, commit. So git chat. And if we look into it, uh, well, after the project build uh, is finished, we'll see that there is the, the binary file is stored inside this directory. Now it's empty because the project uh, the, the project build it. The, the project didn't feel build it. Finish build. Okay. Um, believe me, you'll see it there. Let me just kill it since uh, this will just uh, 
uh, waste uh, some time. Let me close this. Okay, so um, you see now uh, we sort of cheated because uh, what we did, uh, we started from a very unrealistic uh, scenario when we have a completely empty project, we have uh, just uh, four or five files and we had it one at a time. Uh, but uh, if we work with uh, already existing projects that are big and have uh, tens or hundreds of files and uh, hundreds of properties that were changed in the Vivado GUI and you don't remember, you want to keep track of all of them. Uh, it's kind of a pain to do it um, uh, manually, to add every single uh, um, file manually and hold the properties manually. And fortunately, HOG provides you a way to do it uh, automatically. Unfortunately, this feature is only supported in uh, Vivado, but uh, it will be supported in Quartus at some point. So I think it's still, it's still worth for Quartus and developers to follow this part. So um, to show you that you can uh, do this automatically, we are gonna switch to a new project an existing project. So you go here on uh, converting uh, existing project to hog, you open this guide and you open here uh, this, um, this project. So this is a project I was working uh, with a uh, few years ago, way before I knew hog was a thing. Um, I was working with uh, well other colleagues, uh, and so we have um, it has a bunch of stuff. So in particular, uh, there are there is a Kintex Seven FPGA, and you can build several kind of uh, firmwares for you here. So if you don't believe me, you can go on uh, the commits. And you'll see that uh, apart from a um, few commits that we did in the, I did in the last two weeks, uh, um, because I upgraded IPs and of course that broke something, I need to fix it. But you see that uh, this is an old project that's from, uh, last commit was from 20 June, 2018. So uh, I assure you, I didn't know that Hog was a thing. So this is a real project I was working with. Um, so now we want to start working with uh, this project and uh, the first thing we uh, want to do now, uh, since we, you can't all push, uh, if you want to try it yourself, you can't all push here. We click it on fork and you fork it on your own uh, uh, namespace. I already did, so you can just click here and you see. This is the fork I, I created for, for the tutorial. Um, and uh, now we clone the project. We can clone it to, for example, the SSH. So, Let's go back to our um, shell and we run git clone and we paste the, the link that we just copied. We browse into it and okay, we can close this open project because it's going just, just going to confuse me. Okay, so um, as I was saying, what's inside of this uh, repository that we just cloned? Well, uh, you can. There are um, different Kintex firmwares. Uh, there are free actually. They all do different things. And today we're only going to work with the smallest one for time reasons. But uh, you can apply the same procedure to uh, to the other two, and uh, they will work exactly the same. And so how do you create the project? Well, um, we were nice people at the time, so we didn't um, commit directly the Vivado project, but we instead have a script to generate it, but we can just uh, read, go and uh, read the readme of the project and we copy the, these two commands. That is what we need to create the project. So let's wait, Vivado is gonna create the project now. And actually the script, uh, ask you what project you want to build. Uh, there are again three projects, but we are going to build the, the template one because it's the smallest one. Um, so here 
well, Vivado is going to build the project. Uh, what's inside the, the project? Well, um, sorry, here. Okay, so what's inside the project? Well, um, mm, this is a very simple project. It's just a template uh, and it contains a wrapper around the register block, uh, block design, and uh, there is also a simple IP that is just the clocking wizard for the system clock. So uh, this, the, the basic idea, you don't really care because this is, has nothing to do with Hog, but if you're curious, the basic idea is that uh, uh, with the block design, you can read and write the firmware register using the register block. And that there is a connection with a different FPGA, but again, I will go very fast through it because we don't really care at all in, um, for, for the purpose of the tutorial. So we open the VAD again. We are going to open the project we just created. Go on open project. The project is here. Pile up key text template. We open it. So, as I was saying, there is a wrapper in VHDL this time around uh, um, there is this block design uh, and the register block. So, um, uh, plus there is this um, IP. And there is, uh, of course, a constraint file. And this is everything we care about. So this is the project. This is uh, what the project looks like. Um, we are very happy with it. So close it because we now we created it. We won't need it almost anymore. And uh, um, so we now that we have a, a project, uh, we want to convert it to hog somehow. And uh, we could do it manually again. So we created the top directory, the project name directory, and uh, we manually created the hot.conf and all the list files. Or we can do it automatically uh, by running uh, hot commands, as I will show you in one minute. So we go back to the repository um, root and uh, uh, as uh, before, we need to import mod, uh, hog as a submodule. So we do git at submodule https slash slash ch slash hog slash hog git. Of course, that was the wrong command. Git submodule add. Okay, so we have uh, we imported again hog as a submodule, and uh, uh, we can uh, now run this magic script by hog, which is called hog init.sh. And now hog is gonna ask you a bunch of questions like, do you want uh, to compile questions in libraries for Vivado? And uh, no, we don't because we're not gonna use a prestasim. Same for model sim. And now the interesting part. So Hog found our project in, uh, in our repository and asked you if you want to convert it to Hog. So it will automatically uh, create the list files and the hog.com file. And yes, definitely we, do to, we want to do it now. So we uh, type yes. And the Hog will perform its uh, magic by itself. So let's wait a few seconds. Again, this won't work on Quartos. At uh, the moment, it's only supported on Vivado, unfortunately. Um, it also asks if you want to uh, create a project now, and we again are going to say yes. And now it asks you if you want to add the free buttons. So if add the GUI, so it asks you if you want to add the free OG specific buttons. Um, they, I'll, we are going to say yes, and I will show you 
uh, in a few moments uh, what they are and what they do. But if you were uh, paying attention to Francesco's presentation, you already know. Finally, uh, last question is, uh, it says that uh, the OG could not find a tag in this repository in the major, minor, patch uh, format. So it asks you if you want to create a new initial tag called v0.0.1. And again, we say yes. Hold on. Okay, so what happened? Um, we see that uh, OG created, um, OG uh, did the bunch of magic and created the top directory that was not there before. And if we look into it, uh, there is the um, project top uh, project name, so file up key text template. And if we look into it, uh, you can see that there is the hog.conf uh, and uh, if we look into the list directory, there, is, there are a series of list files containing all the files that are needed in our project. So if we, for example, if we look what's inside hog.conf, uh, you see again that this is a Vivado project. So there is a hashtag Vivado um, keyword here. And uh, we didn't change any, so my project uh, didn't specify any major project property. We just, so we just set the, the part here. And uh, we also set that uh, this is a KC705 board part. So this is, the, those are all the properties that were uh, recognized by HOG and automatically tagged it. Uh, if we browse, for example, the list files, uh, um, let's look into this default SRC. You see that here uh, they were added the IP and the uh, block design file. So um, OG did everything by itself, and you uh, uh, also created the new project. Uh, we can open the new HOG project. So we run the VAD again. We open project. The new project is in a project, project name. We open it. And you see, again, this looks exactly identical to the starting project. So they're exactly the same, uh, no difference uh, at all. But now, and this project has all the hog a nice feature inside that are masked by you, but they are inside. Another thing you immediately noticed is that now we have three new buttons on the Vivado toolbar, uh, which are called check, list, and conf. And what do they do? Well, um, every time you change anything in your project, you had the new file or you change a project property, you need also to uh, modify the list files accordingly and the hog.conf accordingly. And if you forget, or if you're not sure that everything is fine, you just click on the check button. And it will say, uh, it will check if the project and the list files are actually matching. So in this case, uh, they do, since we just created the project. And uh, so that's uh, very good. And what happens if we, for example, we change uh, some project property? So let's say, for example, we want to change uh, some synthesis uh, property. We're going to run synthesis, synthesis settings. And uh, well, let's say we change a strategy to be flow area optimized medium. We click on apply. OK. Uh, let's uh, clean the messages and let's click on the check button again. Huh, now there is a bunch of critical warnings uh, because um, um, Hog uh, found that uh, the list files actually match, so the files are actually the same, but the hog.conf, so the project properties are not uh, the same. And if you open, it's actually saying that uh, the strategy of synthesis uh, was changed to flow area optimized medium. And uh, there are also um, a couple of extra settings that were um, changed by Vivado once you clicked on the strategy flow, the strategy um, settings uh, with synthesis. 
So if you want this critical warning to disappear, um, you need the, uh, you can open hog.conf and add the, the, those free lines by, your, by yourself, or uh, much simpler, you can just click on the conf button. So the conf button will automatically recreate hog.conf. You will see it says that uh, this uh, setting was uh, added into in hog.conf and also the others. And if we click the check button again, we see that again, everything is fine. Everything matches the, the project and the hog.conf match again. Um, we can look into our hog.conf and we see that uh, um, actually it was changed with respect to before. Now there are three extra lines that are actually the, the lines that we just uh, had did while pressing the button. Okay, so we created the project. Um, well, we can now build it. And uh, again, we could uh, start building it uh, while using the um, launch workflow as before, or we can um, we can click on run synthesis. We are going to do it, and uh, let's wait a bit because now it's going to build the IP course, and there there's the block design that I for completely forgot to I completely forgot to start the the build before, so it's gonna take a while. Um, in the meantime, since uh, this is going to take a while, do you have any questions? Can please uh, Francesco check if there is any raised hand? Yeah, actually, they are they are asking plenty of questions in the chat in the meanwhile. Ah, okay. But uh, if someone wants to ask a question, why? Okay. Hands are raised. Maybe I can answer. If you want to take a minute, I can answer one of these questions instead of writing. I can answer it. Uh, um, okay, let's start from. Well, I don't know. Uh, For example, there's this one. Does Hog support working with custom IPs packet then imported in a second project? So. You can do that because once you package it, if you commit the package IP, obviously you can do it. Hog supports an external IP repository, I think it's called in, in Vivado. And, um, but also uh, recently you know, on an issue, um, a colleague from, I don't know from where, he wanted to do exactly that. So he has a, pro a project that creates an IP and he packages it and another one that includes that. And yes, that can be done uh, as long as you create the project that uh, packages the IP as a pre uh, script of the second project that includes it. So when you do create project of the main project, what actually happens is that Hog creates the IP project, packages it, and then includes it in the in the second project. Did we did we wait long enough, Nico? Almost. Okay, that, that's fine. Let me summarize a bit what we did. So otherwise I'm going to lose, to lose focus. Okay, so just a quick summary of what we did. We cloned an existing um, a repository. Uh, we opened the, the project, wherever, wherever it was. And uh, we uh, added Hog as a sub module and we just run the init.sh script that uh, um, automatically converted the existing project into Hawk. And uh, we and that's basically where we are now. So the synthesis, uh, it's now completed. So we that was ex actually um, perfect timing. And uh, if you look here, there is a bunch of Hog messages. But what we are interested in is that uh, there are actually some critical warnings. And we are never happy when we see critical warnings. And uh, if you look, uh, uh, they are all uh, by hog. Um, so what's going on here? Well, in, what we forgot to do is uh, to commit everything. 
So Og wants you to commit everything other, um, before you start the, synth the synthesis. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will uh, uh, give you a set of critical warnings. And this is done on purpose because uh, uh, we want to include the actual Git SHA that uh, needs, to, uh, needs to, to contain everything that is in the project inside uh, the firmware. So we look, um, um, how do we fix it? Well, we run git status and we see that there is a bunch of red stuff and red means bad as always. So there is um, um, one thing we I never did in my project and we need to fix it now is that uh, we don't have a proper git ignore. So all the IP auto-generated stuff uh, uh, are going to appear here in the git status. And uh, we uh, we can fix it. Uh, we for, can, for example, copy the uh, git ignore template from Pog. So we copy the Pog templates git ignore here in and we edit it a bit so this template git ignore assumes that uh, all your ips are in a directory called ips and all your bds are in a directory called bds this is not exactly our case because we have our ips in a directory called firmware index template is let me just copy it and paste it here and for the bds uh for so for the block designs uh, we have them in firmware index bd template and again i'm going to copy this and paste it here, saving, closing. And if we do git status now, uh, we see it's much cleaner. And of course we need to add all the files we, um, we just created. So all the, top all the files in the top directory that were automatically created, but we need to manually add. Uh, the git ignore, we just added it. And then the, um, the block design. So it's in the firmware, index, BD. Okay, so and uh, so what's this? This is the project we created previously. So the original project, we are not going to need it anymore. So we can just delete it. And now we can commit. Um, let me add a hog keyword, which is a feature. And this keyword will be used uh, by CI to create a release note um, when, uh, for our release. Uh, this will be shown you by Davide very soon. And uh, well, converting for, oh yeah, for this feature column converting project to home. Okay, um, now we run git status again and we see the, the repository is clean. And if we uh, look at what's inside our project, we see that there is again the bin directory that is where we all the output uh, generated files are stored. If we browse it, uh, we see that uh, um, there is a directory called project name dash version dash previous git sha dash dirty. Why is the dirty suffix there? Well, because uh, we didn't, when we started synthesis uh, earlier, we didn't uh, commit uh, anything. So the deposit repository was dirty. If we run synthesis, syn synthesis again, I never managed to pronounce it correctly. 
uh, we waited a minute uh, and uh, this time it should be faster because the IPs are already uh, synthesized. And uh, we'll see that the critical warning are supposed to, I mean, sh shall be, should be gone. Um, let's wait a minute. We can immediately look that if we look inside the bin directory, uh, now there is an, um, a new subfolder here, which is called project name version new shell. Oops. Okay. Sorry. And uh, there is no more the dirty suffix because uh, this time the, the repository is clean. And also, if we look at the messages after synthesis, uh, we see that there is no more um, critical, there are no more critical warnings. Uh, but uh, the hog magic still happen and is, um, you don't see it, but uh, it's there. Now we can generate a bit stream and uh, well, let's just wait a bit. Um, so we converted our project to hog. Uh, we actually missed a very big step because we are not uh, using any of the, we're not using uh, most of the Hognes feature. Uh, for example, we're not using the Hog generics, uh, uh, such as the um, SHA, the global SHA, or the version of the of our project. Um, so a good policy will be to have those generics and somehow read them in your firmware. So you, when you load the firmware in your FPGA. At any moment, if you can uh, read fear, you, if you can read registers, you can also uh, read the, uh, what version you were working with, and this will correspond univocally to the um, to the commit SHA and the repository that you were working with. So, from a certain source file, you have all one and one firmware. Um, so we can now add the Git generics, uh, and to do it. Uh, uh, we can again copy them from um, um, hog templates. So let's open hog templates top .bhd. We copy the generics from the template. We're going to paste it here. And uh, let's give a quick look to them. Uh, so there is the global, the date of the, the global commit uh, and the um, time also. There is the version and the SHA of the global repository of the top file of constraints file and of hog uh, um, some module. Then there are um, those, uh, those generics are only meant for um, in case you have IP bus in your repository and we don't have it, so we can delete them. And here you need to edit those. There are a project specific generics. You need to have one per uh, HDL library that you have in your project. In our case, we have, uh, we're only using the Xilinx default lib. So we are, instead of my lib, we are gonna put the Xilinx default lib. And we have another lib called default. Um, the, this one is meant for the, in case you have external libraries and it's not our case. And finally, uh, the last one is meant for flavors and we don't have flavors so we can delete them completely. Okay, now, if you want to do it a nice thing, you also uh, should connect uh, those generics to actual firmware registers. And if you remember uh, with our firmware, you can actually read firmware registers, so it's possible. I'm not gonna go through it because it's uh, not related to HOG at all, but if you look uh, at the HOG documentation in the tutorial part, uh, you will find uh, all the instruction to do it. So if you want to try it, just do it yourself. Uh, so we change it, the 
top file we want to add and commit. Uh, okay, we had the um, we're going to have this top file. Add all generics. Good. And. Uh, so that's it. Basically, that's how you uh, convert your project to Hog. Uh, if I have far, five more minutes, and uh, the answer is yes. Uh, the answer is no, but I'm going to take them. Um, I'm going to show you, just for the purpose of uh, the tutorial, um, I'm going to create uh, a simulation set uh, and see how to connect, how to um, have it to our Hog project. So we want to add, um, we're going to have a very, very dummy simulation and uh, we can do it uh, easily. Um, let's uh, create a new simulation set. So we go here and add sources. We had uh, create simulation sources. Next, uh, we want to create a new simulation set that is going to be very dummy and we are calling it dummy underscore sim. Uh, please pay attention. So this is one of the few hog constraints. If you have a simulation set, uh, it shall end with underscore sim. Otherwise, hog will complain. So you call it uh, dummy sim, and uh, you we create a new file uh, that is going to be inside uh, file up devil firmware kintex uh, template. Uh, test bench okay and we're gonna call it uh, well we can give it uh, any name for example we can call it uh, um, uh, let's say sys rock sorry if I look into it so I don't do any mistakes okay let's call it sys clock tb Okay, finish. Okay, everything is fine, like it is. Now, um, we have our new simulation set here. We set the file we just created as a top. And uh, now we open the file, we see the file is empty. We want to add a very dummy simulation set. Uh, I'm going to copy it from the um, documentation, from what I wrote in documentation. So I, here it is, uh, the fancy simulation set. Sorry, let me set this at the top. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, so let's look into this uh, simulation set. Well, there is a, uh, it's a very dummy simulation. So there is just a, a clocking wizard uh, that, uh, that is a reset. So there is a reset that is released after one microsecond. And then after 20 microseconds, a message is printed to, to screen saying that simulation is done. So um, we can now run the simulation. Uh, we can now run the simulation, but if we do it, uh, we need to change something because by default, uh, Vivado runs simulation for one microseconds. Uh, but if we want to see anything to be printed on screen, we need to change the running time of the simulation to be 20 microseconds. So we go here on tools, settings, uh, simulation, we select our simulation set, dummy sim. We go on simulation here and we set the XSIM simulator runtime to be 20 microseconds. So here we are using Vivado simulator, but you can uh, use uh, any simulator supported by Vivado for this thing. Uh, so here we run simulator, we run simulation. And uh, let's wait a few seconds for simulation to open. Okay, here you say the, say the simulation run for 20, whoops, 
for 20 microseconds and we see the simulation is done message printed to screen very good we can close it it's nothing fancy at all again it's a very very dumb simulation um so we created a simulation set uh, we changed some properties but we didn't inform hog yet so if we look if we click on the check button, we see that there is again a bunch of critical warnings that is saying exactly that we didn't inform of, of this. So we click on the list hog button and this will take care of recreating uh, everything. Info. Clean, we see that uh, everything was uh, recreated properly. Hopefully, at least. Yeah, you see? And now we can look inside top file up king text template list. We see that there is a new file called dummy, name of the simulation set, dot sim, meaning that this is a, a simulation list file. And we, if we open it, So we see that all the information needed are here. So we are specifying that the simulator we're using is XSIM, Vivado Simulator. This is the um, only file needed for the simulation. The top module is this uh, sysclock wizard test bench and the runtime is 20 microseconds. We have this final uh, number here, 93. That, is, that means that this is not uh, a VHDL 2008 uh, um, file, but is a VHDL 93. Okay, um, we have to commit everything again. So we have the test bench and the list file. We commit. And we are done. So we are ready to go. We can create a project, uh, generate a bit stream, and we have all the hog features uh, in place, at least locally. Now, if you, um, I'm done for today, but uh, if you want, uh, uh, you can do more fancy things and uh, you can look uh, into the hog documentation. I reported a couple of extra examples. So let's say, for example, here we have um, a block design. Uh, that we had it as a, as a BD to the project. But let's say that for whatever example, you want to generate it uh, before creating the project, and then you want to, so, and then you want to add it. And there is a procedure detail that explains you exactly how to do that. And this also applies to IPs or um, user IPs or anything that comes to, to your mind. And uh, there is also another example. So here you have the hog generics in the top module, but uh, let's say that you want to define a user uh, generic. So another generic uh, other from those, how do you do it? Well, of course you can do it. And uh, there is a, an example with a few extractions that will tell you how exactly to do that. Um, I think that's it from my side. And now we leave the word to Davide that will show you uh, how to start from what we have now with this project, how to uh, configure your CI. So let me stop sharing. No, no. Is there any question in the meantime? Most of the questions were answered on the chat. So maybe David can start sharing, I think. Okay, thank you. I start sharing my screen. Okay, you should see my screen, I guess. Okay, I will show you how to run the OG continuous integration. 
uh, with the, uh, the uh, with the GitLab uh, CI basically. And to do so, we will need a machine that uh, is able to run uh, Vivado basically. Uh, at CERN, in our project, usually we use all the OpenStack machines that uh, CERN provides, but in principle, the CI can be run on any machine that runs either, uh, so both Vivado or Quartus, uh, if you need, and the, um, the GitLab runner. So even uh, uh, in principle, also Windows machine could run uh, the, one of our developer, as I mentioned before in the chat, uh, managed to run it uh, using Windows, but um, uh, this is still preliminary. We didn't put the instructions here. So uh, the first step then will be to create our uh, OpenStack machine. And this can be done by going to openstack.cern.ch. Uh, and uh, just click on instances on the left side in this uh, in the menu and you will see the uh, list of uh, uh, instances so the machines uh, the virtual machines that uh, uh, you you have created in this case we have already two but to create a new one just click on launch instance yep Ah, oh, uh, sorry. Okay, now you should see the, the real one. Sorry. Okay, uh, I was saying you go to openstack.send.ch, click on uh, instances on the left, then uh, uh, launch instance to create a new machine. Here you put just the name you want for your machine, for example, tutorial uh, two in this case. Description, you can leave it empty. Availability zone is fine. And this is the number of machines you want to create, just one for the moment. And then we uh, suggest to use the latest uh, CentOS 7 uh, version uh, to create the machine. You can click here to add it. Then you go next, and you can choose the flavor of the machine you can use. So these are the normal machine a certain user can uh, can create. In a special case, you can create even larger machines, but you need to ask uh, the computer resources at CERN for larger. Uh, you can see now. Usually, you can also create um, a large M2 large machine with the four uh, CPUs and uh, eight gigabit of RAM but uh, I already created them to uh, speed up the, uh, the, the tutorial. Uh, so in this case, I will not create the machine, but I just show you that I have already created here. I created this OCK tutorial one. One other thing that you have to do is create to create the volume. Uh, we, since we need uh, uh, some space where to store uh, Vivado. So you go click on volume, then uh, volumes again. It's opening slowly. Maybe I stop my video so slightly faster. Okay, and you can see I have already created the Hog uh, HD machine, Hog HD volume. And here, by clicking on actions, you can actually manage the attachments and what you will do is just select the machine where you want to attach this volume in this case is this oct tutorial one 
and then you attach the machine. And now you see that this uh, is reserving and then it, uh, finally we'll attach it to the BDB also. So now we have created our machine, we can log in into that. Uh, so uh, here, so I'm already at CERN, so I, I don't need to log into LX Plus, but uh, yeah, I suggest you to do it anyway, because so the first thing to configure the machine, so in, it's to, um, to uh, clone the virtual machine setup uh, uh, repository that we provide uh, uh, with OG, which is OG PM setup. Here we just have stored uh, um, a couple of uh, useful, uh, useful scripts uh, to set up the, the CERN open stack virtual machines, which are these uh, three. Actually, uh, install dependencies uh, will work on any CentOS machine, uh, while the other two uh, requires uh, a CERN OpenStack machine. So if uh, we now, uh, so basically the three uh, scripts to run are these three. Install dependencies will uh, install uh, all the useful dependencies for the Windows virtual machine, like um, a Git, uh, or also the um, case of CERN, uh, the EOS stuff, and uh, IP bus stuff, or useful stuff to the GitLab runner, of course. Then the volume setup will format the volume we just created and attach to the machine, mount it to the machine. And finally, we have this install runner, which is the most important script which will install our GitLab runner that uh, eventually will run uh, the OG CI. So if we go to our terminal now, uh, see uh, we are, uh, something is wrong, but, okay. Okay, let's try to log into OG tutorial directly. Okay, now you see uh, these machines uh, will have access to your AFS uh, folder. So in principle here, so here, uh, uh, if you log in first to LX Plus, uh, you can uh, clone the virtual machine setup uh, folder uh, repository, which I already did in this case. And here you can see the three uh, scripts and you need to run the install dependencies and volume setup. Uh, to speed up uh, these uh, two uh, scripts, one thing that they don't do is the installation of Vivado that uh, needs to be done uh, independently. And you have to do to take care of that and also uh, take care of the licenses. Uh, since installing the dependencies also formatting the volume takes uh, quite a while, I will use another machine that has that already uh, done. Here we installed Vivado in the mount uh, VD. Xilinx Vivado 2020.2 uh, folder, as you can see. And uh, we already installed the dependencies and um, the volume is formatted. So the only thing that we need to do here is to install uh, the, um, the GitLab runner. So if you go to uh, VM setup and then uh, try to execute this install runner script, it needs to be uh, with sudo uh, writes. You see um, the, uh, the requirements. So we will need uh, uh, the, uh, the username. So the user that will run the CI, in which uh, uh, we suggest to use a service account at CERN. In our case, it will be hog. Then uh, the group in which your uh, user or uh, user uh, service account is. Uh, so in our case, it will be, so you org. In our case, since we are in Atlas, it will be ZP. Then we need the GitLab token. And the GitLab token, it's, uh, uh, you can retrieve it 
from your repository. So if you go to uh, your repository that you fork it, in this case, the one I am starting from where uh, Nico left. If you go to the setting, uh, CI CD. Under runners, you see uh, the here uh, there is the registration token for your repository. So you copy this and you attach it here. Then uh, we you can have uh, also other flag optional flags like the tags. So by default, uh, the OCI requires a machine with a tag, uh, tagged as a hog or Vivado machine. So this needs to be uh, by default. But for example, we can add other tags uh, to the machine uh, that uh, are useful to configure further the, the CI. For example, I don't know if we want a machine specific to run the Questa simulation, we can declare the machine as Questa, or for example, if this machine is a large machine, we call large, and we can then direct specific jobs just to this machine, and other won't be run on that by requiring the jobs to use these tags. Then we have the GitLab URL that in our case is the default gitlab.cern.ch. But if you work, uh, for example, gitlab.com, in this case, you will put URL uh, HTTPS uh, gitlab.com. And then the output limit that it's the maximum size of the uh, log in the CI, which is uh, set to zero by default. Um, uh, so uh, there is no limit basically. By running this, you see, I created uh, uh, the GitLab runner, and uh, if you go now go back to the to the uh, repository to the GitLab website, we just to refresh. You should see here under uh, uh, runners again. We expand it. That now we have uh, uh, this machine. Uh, this uh, uh, runner associated, and you see the tags uh, uh, associated to this machine. Uh, you can configure them further if you like by uh, open it uh, the uh, edge, uh, the configuration in GitLab runner config.toml, and you see the the configuration that we just wrote. One thing that we con can configure is the uh, concurrent, which is basically the number of parallel jobs you can execute with this machine. It's set to one, but we can set to two, for example, or if you have a larger machine, you can even set to uh, a little more. Uh, now we need to change to set the, the required variables uh, to run the CI, which is always done here under settings, CICD variables. And uh, here, I, to speed up, I just set the most important. So we have EOS MGM URL, which is basically you, uh, required only if you want to store uh, your bin, uh, bin or bit files in the end on EOS, uh, and, uh, uh, and also to store, uh, if you want to, you, to copy the IP uh, generated file to EOS to speed up the continuous integration. And this case is just the EOS user.send.ch since we are using the hog uh, service account. Then we have the hog check project ver, which uh, will check uh, the project version of uh, uh, the particular firmware that we want to run. And if this is doesn't change the, with respect to the, uh, the target branch, uh, DCI want to run, and for, for the moment, this is set to zero. The end, then we have the check syntax. So Hog will uh, first run the syntax checker before running the CI. And if it fails, we want to synthesize. Then the check YAML reference. Uh, this will, uh, 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 will check that uh, the GitLab YAML configuration is the same as the OG sub module we check out, create official release. It will create the official release once the tag is created. Then we have the OG email, 
uh, which uh, is the email uh, where, uh, of the service account. The IP EOS path is the path on EOS where we want to store our IP. Uh, for example, uh, here we put uh, the hog uh, sandbox path. Then we have the official bin EOS path, which is the, the same where we store the official uh, outputs um, on EOS, uh, the OG password, which is the password of your service account. The OG path uh, needs to uh, include the path where you installed uh, Vivado or Quartus, or if you want to run also Questasim, uh, uh, Questasim or any other software you might want to run uh, should be included in the path. And this is attached to the path of the machine. The OG push token is the push token of your uh, service account that you can get by clicking on the right here on uh, preferences and you will see SSH token. Uh, use the oxygen if you want to uh, generate also the oxygen, the oxygen documentation. OG user is the username of your account. And finally, OG signing license to run. Uh, for the yeah, where you store the license information for the Viado. Then uh, we need also to uh, configure uh, uh, our repository uh, a bit further. So we go to general here, and uh, we need to uh, change a couple of settings. Uh, I guess is a merge request. You need to be sure that you do fast forward merge and not to not create a merge commit, otherwise the OGCI won't work. And uh, uh, so I will, for, for that I will not allow the squash commit to be sure. Uh, the target project, uh, in this case, it's uh, will target my uh, my forked project and not the, uh, the upstream one, then we save the changes. And a few more uh, settings uh, are in under repository. Uh, the fourth branch uh, is the master, that's fine. Then uh, we have, uh, uh, sorry, I was in CI CD. Here under general pipeline, you be sure to do a git clone every time to have a clean repository at the beginning and the set to zero the git shallow clone to allow uh, an infinite number of commits to be checked out. And also change the timeout, which is by default is one hour, but uh, you know, uh, sometimes the builds of uh, Vivado or firmware takes uh, longer, so you can do uh, one day, for example. Then you save the changes also here. And the last thing we need to do is to add uh, uh, our service account to the project member. So in our case is OG. And it has to have uh, uh, maintainer rights because it will, um, uh, it will create the tags and, uh, automatically and push it. Okay, now we are ready uh, finally to uh, work on the GitLab uh, YAML configuration. So we go to our uh, terminal and our repository. Here, uh, you see it's the same repository that I already put. If I need to do the pull, so it should be uh, Git. So we are in this uh, 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 converting a branch that uh, Nico showed you before. Okay, we are up to date. Uh, so the first thing we need to create is this GitLab YAML, uh, GitLab YAML and we can start by copying the uh, template provided by OG which is now the template gitlab.yaml and you want to copy it in the .gitlab.c uh, slash yeah, uh, 
.gitlab minus ci.yaml. We can have a look into that. And you can see at the beginning, what we do is including the main uh, hog YAML template inside the hog, uh, inside the hog project. This is actually not uh, directing to the, uh, to the folder inside our repository, but to the, uh, sub, to the main repository of hog starting from your GitLab uh, uh, send.ch. If you are using uh, uh, gitlab.com, this actually should be git og uh, og and a certain uh, slash og since uh, we we didn't manage to uh, uh, save uh, to get the og uh, user under gitlab.com but this should work anyway so but we are working at some so og slash og is fine then the reference uh, is actually the version of OG that we want to use, which is 2021.2-2. Um, and then here you do the configuration of your, uh, of your project. Uh, in our case, uh, our project is called uh, PileUp uh, Devil Template. So we need to uh, substitute this example with the PileUp Kintax template, we do. Like that, it is fine. You can also uh, configure some uh, other variables like only synthesis. And this, if you set to one, uh, the generation part will run only uh, the, the synthesis. Then we save the file. Uh, and uh, what we need now is just to add the GitLab CI and commit. So I will use this feature keyword, uh, which uh, as uh, Nico mentioned before, uh, it's uh, useful to fill up the change lock in the release. So basically what Og will do is take, uh, is taking all uh, the entire message after this uh, feature keyword and we'll copy it in the uh, release once it's created. So enabling Og CI for instance, now I push it. And what we need to do to start the CI is uh, uh, create a merge request. So we click on the link uh, provided by uh, the output. So the title is fine, converting the hog. So here you can see that uh, if you are working on a, a working progress, uh, um, a working progress merge request, you can add draft or uh, VIP at the beginning. If you add the draft, uh, at the beginning of uh, your merge request title, uh, the uh, continuous integration will not uh, run since OG requires uh, a not draft uh, work uh, CI to work in order to save uh, resources. Uh, so in this case, our CI is fine. So we just need to, uh, to okay, so the case, they're targeting the master branch, so it's fine. So now we can create the merge request. And if I did everything right, this should start our pipeline. Yes. We can have a look at the pipeline. You see here, uh, so there, so the first stage is this merge and tag stage, which basically uh, uh, just uh, checks that our source branch is not outdated with respect to the target branch. And also uh, if uh, you specify some keywords uh, in the uh, CI, in the merge request description, like a major version or a minor version, it will uh, uh, know that it has to increase uh, the, ma the major or the minor number, which are this zero and uh, zero. In this case, uh, I didn't put everything. So at the end, we will create a release 
uh, our new tag uh, increasing the patch numbers to the last one and our uh, new release will be uh, 002. Then we have the generate and simulation stage. We have the simulation that already passed because it's really quite fast. Uh, actually, uh, simulation library is not fine. Yeah, I guess it's uh, set to run uh, with the quest sim, but I didn't set up. So it's just keeping the simulation for the moment. Then we have the generate part. And now it's uh, generating our file. Uh, one thing is interesting. Uh, uh, you can see this is the same basically output as um, uh, what Nico showed before, uh, uh, but it prints also some information for the CI. For example, the number uh, of uh, jobs uh, in terms of par yeah, parallel jobs. Uh, parallel threads, yeah, that is set by default to four. Then uh, uh, if you set up uh, uh, EOS, it says that the, the IPs will be copied or retrieved by uh, EOS from this folder. Uh, then other useful information, if you will generate the binary file in your case, if you check the syntax in the other uh, information. And now it's uh, running uh, so we we just wait for it to run meanwhile uh, we can uh, have a look here converting hog we can set up uh, the merge request to be merged straight away once the pipeline succeeds Okay, now it's running the IP configuration. And uh, those uh, once uh, at the end of the job, so once the entire uh, implementation is successful, uh, this will be copied back to, uh, uh, to, to EOS. Uh, meanwhile, this runs, maybe if there are questions, so we can take it. I don't know if Francesco or Nico can have a look. Of the um, there are no raised hands, but uh, the, the point is that we are constantly typing on the chat. So any doubts that they had was already clarified, I think. Okay. So maybe meanwhile that this runs, I can uh, uh, speed up a little bit. Uh, so one thing we can do is uh, also, um, Francesco mentioned before that uh, OG allows us to run the new uh, dynamic CI from uh, GitLab. And to do so, uh, we will need to use uh, the uh, dynamic CI uh, YAML. So we have a template also for this. Uh, the first thing uh, to do here in our case uh, will be to use another uh, another branch in order to not pollute the one we are using. Here uh, I copy now the template. I see there is a question from Stefan, maybe. Should be able to unmute. Please go ahead. Do you hear me now? Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, so I just saw um, that that the CI is doing something with, with US, and you also explained that you would clone the repository each time. So in my experiences, I'm not cloning the um, repository each time just in order to speed up the process, which is mainly due to the IP calls because I don't want to regenerate them each time. But could you be more specific on how you treat IP calls? Like it looks like you would generate them once and store them to EOS 
And maybe exactly. in a exactly. second uh, pipeline, just fetch them again because they have already been created. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. Now, this is the first time that they run the CI. Uh, so it uh, st is still uh, regenerating them. But at the end, they will be copied to EOS. And uh, on the next, uh, uh, the next uh, uh, continuous integration uh, pipeline, it will look uh, in this uh, EOS folder. If uh, the XCI SHA hasn't changed, and it, it, it finds uh, not, not only the XCI, also the, the SHA, but also the MD5 uh, uh, SAM SHA, it hasn't changed with respect to the one uh, in, the, in the repository. It will copy the, the generated file from EOS in order to not, not regenerate it. So in that case, it will be uh, basically uh, the CI will be faster. Okay, so using the SHA for the for the file. So if ever anything has changed in this IP core and it would have to be regenerated, you make sure that it is. Yeah, exactly. If it's regenerated, it will recopy the, the file. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, so yeah, as so I was saying, we can copy the GitLab CI uh, dynamic yaml dot in our GitLab CI yaml. If you have a look here now, you will notice immediately that it's much easier, much slimmer. We, because here the projects, uh, uh, what uh, this, um, uh, the dynamic does is looking inside uh, the top folder basically and all the projects that you have in the top folder and it creates uh, a CI job for each project inside that and by default for both simulation and uh, generation project. If you want to configure each project individually inside the top folder, you can add a dedicated specific file, which is called ci.conf. Uh, and uh, if you want more information on that, uh, you can have a look uh, in, uh, in our documentation on, on how to set up that. Uh, in our case, uh, we have just then changed the reference, which is still of 2021.2-2. Save it. Then I commit it. Okay, then I will create the merge request later uh, because we need first to merge this uh, implementation here, but which is almost done because I see that uh, now it passed the IP generation part. Now it's doing the implementation. Of course, if you have any questions, you can interrupt me since this uh, process is easy to explain uh, and uh, it takes a while to, to show the implementation, unfortunately, at least on the first one. Still, Stefan has another question. Yeah, so just as I saw it running in, in as a comment here uh, in your pipeline. So for the license setup, how is that already done? I mean, this is all um, done on the machine that you generated, right? So the machine no, is actually configured inside uh, uh, the GitLab repository here on CI CD. Okay. So if you go here, there is uh, under the variables, yeah. this OGG silent license, which basically it will be exported to. Uh, uh, I don't remember what's the name of exiling license uh, uh, file, I guess. Uh, I don't remember exactly the name of the environmental variable for exilings. 
and uh, well, I can, I'm not sure if I can open it this, but uh, now it points to the server, uh, the Xilinx license. Okay, okay, so, okay. That's where you would put the export for uh, to connecting with the license server. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Let's see now the pipeline. David, maybe if we have to wait one more minute, I can say this thing about the IP, let's call it IP repository. So David explained that uh, the IPs, once they are synthesized, they are copied into this folder on EOS, and then they are retrieved only if they are exactly the same so that you save time instead of resynthesizing them. This is done because in principle, you can use um, several different machines and all of them will not have the same disk. So if you just fetch instead of cloning, that works only if the um, the project was done exactly where it was done before. But of course you need to have uh, EOS. So in the next releases, we plan to do that also locally. So if in your case, for example, you are using always the same machine, so you don't need to go to EOS to copy this uh, IPs uh, up and down, you want to do it in your local machine, then instead of having a EOS folder, you will have a local folder. But of course, in that case, you have to be sure that you run always uh, on the same machine or that the, all the machines you use have a shared disk space um, to, to pick up this, uh, this IPs from. Yeah, I guess Stefan has another question, but meanwhile, you can also see that here, uh, the bit files, are uh, other bit files uh, are copied uh, to uh, this you know this one I want to show uh, da, da, da. do you do you want to take the questions the question now or uh, or we want to go on yeah, you should. Uh, yeah, the question. Okay, you can go on with the question. Yeah. So uh, again, on uh, Francesco, on on this um, Git clone versus Git fetch. Um, to my understanding, Git fetch increases the speed of how Git works tremendously. And the simple question is, why do you rely on on a full clone? What do you think would would make that required if you anyway um, get stuff like IP calls, which you have created in the first place back from EOS, which I find is a very good solution though. Yeah, the problems, um, I don't know if they are still there. It's more for, uh, because we started like that. The, the problem, for example, is if you have an IP that is still there and you um, update it, for example, and then when Vivado goes there and wants to update, maybe sometimes it's locked or, uh, Sometimes we, we had problems with the with the XCI files with that. So at the beginning, we just decided uh, let's. Okay, uh, because my understanding of what Git does or GitLab does is any file which is not tracked by the repository is anyway deleted prior of, um, of fetching. Yeah, just uh, the XCIs are are in the repository, so yeah. that's there is the. Um, the problem. Ah, you mean that while trying to do the fetch, it wouldn't get this done because there's some locking on this file? Yeah, something like that. Or no, or, yeah. or maybe he finds it, um, um, he wouldn't fetch because uh, it's already modified. He would tell you something like stash first. But I don't know if the. No, 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 no. This is not what the CI would do. No, no, definitely not. It will. No matter what you want, what, what is the state, it will override the different state and make sure that the state as by that commit that is being fetched is checked out. Okay, so we could try to fetch instead of clone and, uh, and see. That should speed up the process even more. That is what I am doing, it works. Good. We could try, yes. It's not, uh, it doesn't require any change in the lines in the code, it's just in the documentation basically. Mm -hmm.
So now here you can see uh, that uh, the APIs have been copied here in EOS in this folder, this uh, just five minutes ago. Uh, and then uh, it should have uh, merged the, uh, the CI now. So if you go, I guess so. If you go to the merge request, yeah, you see that uh, this has been merged. If you go to the pipeline page, Everything went well. So it started, uh, it created the, the tag and now it should uh, create the release. And you see these jobs are actually uh, triggered by the service account. Uh, so this is the reason why it needs to have uh, 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 rights to um, maintain a right to your repository. And here is basically copying uh, the, uh, the official bin file together with the Doxygen documentation that we created. So if we can have a look at the EOS here, if you go to the official, you should see that there is uh, this uh, B002. And uh, we also, uh, you see there is this doc, uh, a documentation folder which contains the oxygen part and this is updated with the latest available version every time inside the v002 instead you will have the standard basically the output of your bin bin file bin directory sorry with the file up inside here you have the version txt the same file that Nico showed uh, show you before. Now one thing we can do, uh, for example, so I think it should work. Let's say so here before I uh, I generated the, the the beam file also locally. So inside the, my bin directory, I should have a zero zero two is the latest one, eight. So there should be a bin, no, there is no bit file. Okay, I didn't generate the bin file for today locally, so I cannot do this test, but uh, okay, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, so we were, here now, I was about to show you the um, Dynamics AI. I uh, guess I push, I need just to push. This has been already pushed. So what do we need to do is to create a new merge request. Uh, but first I want to show you one thing. So first uh, let's uh, let's activate this check proj ver setting the, the variable to one. Then if I go to the merge request, I create my new merge request from uh, my dynamic CI branch to the master branch. I compare them. Let's say now I call minor version. Okay. And I create a merge request. Okay, now it's starting. Meanwhile, one thing I didn't show you before is actually the, the list that has been created. If you go to the release page, you see that it created the official version 002. And in the change log, it copied the, the two messages I used uh, to with a feature, a keyword, uh, which were converted the project to OG, which I think was retrieved by, uh, by Nico before, and enabling the OG CI, which are uh, and together with that, we have also uh, the, the bin file, the same that has been uh, the, the bin folder, basically, 
for the this project and the timing summary and the version table summary here. So now going back to the dynamic pipeline. We can have a look at how this looks like. So the merge and tag job is the same as before. Then we have this stage with this generate config uh, uh, stage, which basically uh, generate automatically the YAML file that will be run by uh, the child pipeline, which is the one that uh, eventually runs uh, the uh, building uh, uh, the synthesis. Now, if I click on the child pipeline, you actually see that we have just a collect artifact uh, a stage uh, and the firmware hasn't been built. Uh, why is this? Because I enable this uh, check, project check, check project version uh, variable. And in fact, if we look at the log here, you will see uh, that uh, uh, the specified project uh, was uh, modified in the uh, sorry uh, the year the pile up kintex template project was not modified since the version v002 so it's skipping and it's not creating the configuration uh, now for instance if i go to the to the uh, pipe uh, to the uh, repository again and i open uh, Template. Uh, simple uh, pile up Kintex template file, and I do a simple modification, and, uh, and it's fine. Just uh, space, for example. Now that the file has been touched, so I I commit this file. Uh, fake comment for and a push. This will start, of course, another pipeline. So now let's wait for the generate config part. So in this case, in the generate config, it should create uh, uh, also uh, the project uh, uh, YAML uh, configuration for this pile up Kintex template uh, project, since it has been modified with respect to the latest uh, available tag. Sim, pile up Kintex was modified. So now if we look uh, uh, back at our pipeline, if we click on child pipeline, You will see that we have the, both the simulate project and the generate part, which is now regenerating the, the project. Uh, now, since the EOS uh, part is configured, it should copy the IP uh, from EOS, as we were mentioning before, and this uh, process. So then now the implementation should be uh, slightly faster. And now it's creating the project. Yeah, you see here the XCI found in the repository a copy block the same.
so meanwhile that this uh, uh, continues maybe i can set to merge uh, again if you have uh, other questions we can take it it's fine i guess this uh, was everything i wanted to show you to how to configure the ci but if you want if you have any, any questions uh, yes stefan Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Sorry for that. Um, so you uh, showed in this one pipeline that you would have this hawk user doing something. Does it mean the hawk user itself is something that needs to be added to the project that that we're looking at, and that it would be configured already in the background, right? Like with username, password, you need to have it needs to have access to the um, project, yeah. engine, right? You need to add it in the members. Yeah. Uh, in the maintainer rights and we for that we usually use a service account in fact okay okay it's, it's entirely uh, under your responsibility to have the service account but we as a user we would just have to edit in the members no 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 you uh sorry if I interrupt you need uh, to use your service account you set up a service account the user set up a service account that has access to their uh repository as oh. the hog account because we use it for other things we used it also for the for this uh, tutorial but for example in effects i have another service account that is called effects and i use that one uh, okay do you know that um with gitlab oh no i have to lie uh dot 10 so 13.10 or so or also they introduced that you would have a service account or um how to say yeah uh, so to say a service account within that project like a bot that you can apply maybe that would do the same thing yeah that would that would be nice because it is automatically coming with gitlab now and you don't need to set up ask for CERN to create a service account yeah. set up password and so on it's just you you connect it it's basically already there and it's coming just with a token i think if you uh you catch me now on the left foot, but it's somewhere in the settings. You can set access token and you can create a new token and it automatically creates a user that is associated to that project. Yeah, I think this is this would be a nice feature. I, I didn't know about that. The only thing that I see is that if you want to do also the EOS website, in that case, you need uh, to have a, a user that... Also that is exactly where you need to know what the dependencies are, so what this account is used for. So in that case, of course, you are right. Uh, if this, this Git user account would not be available on EOS, but if you need to have access there, then a service account, I think, is the only way. Yeah, okay, but uh, for sure, I will look into this... Uh token thing because it seems much uh, much uh, it's much useful especially because we want it uh, also to be used outside CERN so if hog is used outside CERN there is not such a concept as a service account so it would be much much uh, nicer okay other questions, maybe? I just wanted to add the thing that the thing that David did the check proj bear that enables uh, hog to pick just the project that have changed with respect to the last master commit on master with respect to the last release. That's very nice in the dynamic CI because the dynamic CI doesn't even create the job if it's not uh, uh, to be executed, basically. But that the same feature is also implemented in the static CI. And in that case, the job is created because the YAML is static, so you can't avoid to create that. But it's not run. So basically, the moment it started uh, running the job for that project, it realizes that uh, it hasn't been changed with respect to master and uh, and so basically it just marks it as successful so um, it's not as nice as in the dynamics ai with ci but uh, it still works also in the in the static one any other questions
So are you done, Davide? Uh, basically, yes. Yeah, well, no, this, yeah, it takes still a while, maybe. Yeah, we want to just, we, in the end, we will just create a new release uh, with a uh, 0 0.1.0 in that case, since uh, I declare it a minor version, but. Did you merge the one that didn't create any project? One? No, no. Oh, no, you didn't. Okay. Just because in this case, maybe it's interesting because uh, people might wonder what happens because say that I have five projects in my repository and only one is created. What happens to the other four in the release? Obviously, in that case, that release is only about one of the of the FPGAs, so the others you don't have there. But Hog will automatically put a link to the uh, to the last yes. release for for those that are not there. In the so in the repository release in the in the yeah. website, you will still find the zip file. Just say that it was a version three point zero. That one will be two point nine but it will still be there. Exactly. Yes, okay. So I don't know if uh, there aren't any other questions. Doesn't seem so. So should I do some final remarks or uh, or do you want to wait? <laughs> Sorry, David? Stefan has another question. Yeah, since you have up the release notes page, so this is clearly fully automatically generated, which is not too bad, but could you be a little bit more explaining how could a user interfere with or what how can a user inject? I mean, we have seen that you put feature somehow. Is there more than feature or? Could you maybe address this no. a little? Unfortunately, there is just this feature, but uh, automatically, yeah, we haven't foreseen any other uh, other way uh, the, for the moment. So, what I, what I, if I can, may summarize what I understood? So, you would put a commit message, and you would uh, have it starting with feature, and then whatever text um, is coming behind that, this is then. Um, appearing here in the change log, right? That is how a user would inject information to the release notes, right? Yes. We were thinking also for the next uh, uh, release of HOG uh, to copy maybe the merge request uh, the, the, uh, description in the in the release as well. Yeah. But yeah, um, we, don't, we didn't have other uh, ideas for the moment. The, okay. the idea is that uh, if the release is a, a real release, so if, if you are uh, using a, a thing that really should be used by other people, then what you do after this, you click that um, always modified. that pen button. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can always change that. I know there, um, and you do it properly. Uh, but in any case, you have a um, starting point with this uh, with this uh, change log there automatically because developers tend to forget, or uh, in any case, you give them. Um, yeah, which brings me to my second remark on this. I mean, yes, everything is nicely tagged and you, you basically what you're doing is you're creating a tag for every merge request, right? For every yes. request that is merged uh, into master, yeah. I'm just wondering if this is not just a little bit too much because you have so many releases because every tag also generates a release in the end and populates this release page. And I'm wondering if this is not, yeah, if it's just too much because at some point your, your, your project has multiple development stages, right? And usually let's say from one relevant release to the next relevant release to the project, there would be, let's say at least maybe three or four or five merge requests. Maybe not all of them are related to even firmware because some may just update whatever documentation or whatever you, is still in this repository. And I'm just wondering, yeah, how one could make it such that not for every single merge request a tag is being created. Yeah, so a way to do that is to have an intermediate branch and to merge to that. And then, for example, you call it develop. 
and you still go through all the process, but then you just do the release when you merge to master. That is similar to what we do for Hog. For Hog, actually, we do both the releases because we don't mind having too much. But okay, so what you're yeah. saying is that this releasing and creating of a tag is only done when merging to master. To a specific branch that by default yeah. master, you can change the name. Yeah, uh, yeah. A hog, uh, hog main branch. Yeah. I don't remember, there is a variable though. That you okay, can... that yeah. makes perfect sense. But but still the entire routine of, of creating and, 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 and running the CI that makes sure that the simulation runs and the compilation runs through, that would still work even if you merge to an intermediate branch. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, exactly. So for the intermediate branch, uh, you, you can, it's, uh, it's not meant for what uh, exactly what Francesco said. The intermediate branch is meant to run uh, specific uh, projects that you want to run for, uh, for example, only if you merge, uh, if you direct to the intermediate branch, but not to the master branch. So if, for example, in this case, we have just one uh, uh, firmware project, but if we were add two, for example, a project one will be run only if a merge request targets the intermediate branch and project two, if it targets the master branch, for example, this is configurable. For what you were mentioning before, for example, if you were uh, to, if you would want to create a tag, uh, if you didn't touch any firmware source file, for example, I don't know, you touch just the readme file of your uh, repository, you can uh, still use the standard GitLab keywords to avoid the CI. So I guess it's square in uh, under square brackets, uh, CI skip. And this will, uh, of course, skip the CI <laughs> and you can then merge this branch. And uh, OG will anyway uh, try to create the master pipeline. But since also the master pipeline will have this CI skip uh, um, CI skip merge, uh, CI skip commit, sorry. Uh, also the master pipeline will be skipped. So in the end, uh, no tag will be created in the case. I don't know if I was clear, but. Yeah, you were. Um... But this works only if, uh, I guess, if you touch, uh, uh, you say you should use just if you touch files that are outside of uh, the firmware project, because so... otherwise. I think what I would like to see is if there would be an option in the merge request somehow that you say create a new tag or not. Everything else looks very good to me, but that's that's the point. I just don't want to have a, a new tag for every merge request. That's that's what, at least from what, what the presentation now showed me is one thing I really wouldn't like. Maybe I'm the only one, but. We can uh, uh, foresee this uh, feature out. Of course, it's uh, not difficult. There is a question in the chat about the OG, the OG with ICE and yeah, the OG is, uh, support, supports uh, IC or plan ahead. Uh, I guess the, there is something missing probably or what doesn't work with the plan ahead? I don't remember so, exactly. Uh, actually, you, you require a plan ahead project. So you can, uh, if you plan ahead is an intermediate uh, version. Uh, between uh, ISC and Vivado. So you can, uh, in case you have an ISC project, you need to convert it to, to plan ahead for up to work. Uh, everything else is the same, um, but uh, uh, ISC, uh, so this plan ahead doesn't support the um, automatic uh, conversion of um, config files, uh, same as portals and um, uh, list files. So you have to do it by yourself. Um, but uh, again, this is something that will be implemented in the future. And uh, um, if you um, implement the project, so if you build the project uh, uh, via the GUI, unfortunately, uh, uh, plan ahead doesn't support uh, pre synthesis or post uh, implementation uh, scripts. So you, it's, you have to um, build the project using the command line if you want it to work properly. Otherwise, uh, all the other uh, implement all the other features are implemented. Yeah, however, in the documentation, uh, it should be specified feature by feature if it's uh, for plan ahead or not. But anything that has to do with the graphical interface basically can't be in plan ahead because uh, 
as uh, Nico was saying, they don't um, source automatically the the tree synthesis and post uh, bit file script. So there's nothing we can do, but the scripts work. Okay, the release here has been created. You can see that now updated the minor number. So yes, I, if uh, there aren't any questions, maybe Francesco would like to say something. No, just um, just to show how to contact us and then these things when you when you think you are done. Okay, so I stop sharing. So thank you everyone for uh, <laughs> putting up with us and thank you David and uh, Nico. I <laughs> am understanding now that your, <laughs> uh, your work was much more tiring than mine, but I did my best uh, answering the, the questions on the chat. Thank you everyone to, um, um, for participating to this um, tutorial. It's the first time that we do it uh, in, in this way for everyone on, uh, on Zoom and there were plenty of people. It was very nice. Um, I think we will do it again in the future, but not in the, not, not next week, let's say. <laughs> so uh, HOG is available here. This is our repository. The documentation is here. Please uh, read it and, and tell us if something is not clear or if there are mistakes. And this is uh, our email and you can write suggestions or even simply uh, this seems silly, but we don't know uh, who uses HOG because uh, um, GitLab doesn't give you the, the, op the opportunity to, to ask who cloned it. That's a thing in GitHub. That's why many people use GitHub. So actually there could be thousands of people using HOG and we wouldn't know. So please just drop us an email and tell us, ah, we are using HOG successfully in this project and so that we can add it to this list. And if you like it and you like Tickle and you would like to participate, uh, we are three, we are five people. So if somebody has a spare time and wants to participate, uh, we are happy to, to have new people in the HOG team. And I think this is it. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, then drop us an email. Um, thank you very much. Anything else, David? Nico? Oh, yeah, I would also like to thank uh, everybody for joining. I think it was very nice to see some uh, high participation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. We will uh, stop recording now and uh, and close the meeting. Thank you. Bye.